At the far end of the beach, where the fish swim no more, and the reef is just a skeleton of what it was before, there lives the forgotten beach of the drifted away Coralax. And deep in the dry seagrass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Coralax once stood. What was the Coralax, and why was it there, and why was it drifted away somewhere? From the far end, where the old seagrass grows, the old twicer lives here. Ask him, he knows. If you want to hear the story, you must come very near, says the twicer in a voice that's not very clear. Way back in the days when the shore was clean, and the ocean still had fish and the reef was pristine, the songs of the humpbacks rang out in space. One summer's noon I came to this glorious place, and I saw the reef, the reef, oh the bright colored reef. All my life I'd been searching for reefs like these. The sight of their colors was prettier than seas. The flying fish flew and the manini fish grew. The colored fish gazed and the yellow tangs played. I'd felt happy like no feeling before. I unloaded my boat and began the great chore. In no time at all I had cleared a great spot, but supplies to build with there were not. So I bought some concrete and I ordered some wood and I built a cabana the best that I could. Then I wanted to add color to its gray boring walls and with all this colorful coral there was no problem at all. But as I collected my coral I heard a great splash and out from the reef came the great Coralax. Mister, he said with a salty sneeze, I am the Coralax. I speak for the reefs. I speak for the reefs because the reefs have no tongues. I'm asking you, sir, the top of my lungs. He was very upset and he grinded his teeth. What's this you're doing with my beautiful reef? Look, Coralax, I said, there's no cause for a snort. I mean you no harm. I'm just building a resort. But all this construction is causing destruction. Look closer, sir, and you'll see it's not right to cause all this dirt runoff that's blocking the light. Their polyps need this light to make food, and smothering them is really quite rude. These coral only have color when they're alive, and out of the water they will not survive. I repeat, cried the Coralax. I speak for the coral. Go away, I told him. I have no time to quarrel. But if figuring my resort was part of my plan, I knew I would need a few extra hands. I got on the phone and made a few calls and found some cheap labor in no time at all. Now I had many cabanas lining the shore, but it still wasn't enough. I wanted more. I built a 15-hole course for the guests to play and made sure it was fertilized once a day. For water activities, we had special shoes so they could walk on the reef whenever they choose. To have the best snorkeling, more fish we would need, so we attracted more schools with our delicious fish feed. Each night there was a buffet with every kind of fish, so that people could choose whatever they wished. But that Coralax about one thing was right. All the colorful coral on the walls had turned white. But we had twice as many guests as before. And that Coralax, he didn't show up anymore. But then suddenly, one day he was back at my door. He snapped, I am the Coralax. I speak for the reefs, which you seem to be killing as fast as you please. I've come to tell you of the herbivore fish, which you serve to your guests whenever they wish. These herbivore fish on algae do graze, but now that they're gone, the algae just stays. And without a healthy reef, there is reason to fear that the end of this beautiful place may be near. And with all your cups and forks and single-use plastic, are creating a problem that is really quite drastic. And my poor green sea turtles are all getting crummies, because they have plastic and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They have to find real food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, turtles, he cried, and he set them away. I, the Twiceler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. Then one day I was watching the waves without a care, and the Coralax appeared and gave me a scare. I am the Coralax, I speak for the reefs that are disappearing. Despite all my warnings that I don't think you're hearing, now the dolphins and monk seals, as far as they roam, cannot find any food, so they must leave their home. And then I got mad, I got terribly mad. You keep saying that what I am doing is bad? If you're not going to stop yelling at me, leave this place now and just let me be. And at that very moment, we heard a loud crunch as the last of the coral reef was removed in one bunch. And as I heard that horrible sound, I felt my heart fall, since I knew that it contained the last polyps of them all. The Coralax said nothing, and with just a sad look and a sigh, he walked to the shore without saying goodbye. I'll never forget the grim look on his face, 
as he drifted away from this once beautiful place. And then the guests all packed up and went home, and I was left in this abandoned place all alone. And all that the Coralacs left here in this mess was a small pile of dead coral with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my cabanas have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, since you are here, the word of the Coral Act seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. So here, it's the last coral polyp in a bowl of salt water. To grow a new reef, you'll need this one for a starter. To have a successful resort, this reef you must protect, and you must teach your guests to treat it with respect. Let it flourish, protect it, and share what you've learned. Then the coral axe and all of the marine life may one day return.